So for today's video, I want to examine something that people have talked about a lot, but I haven't seen a whole lot of concrete data on. With the help of some tools within Windows, as well as the FLIR one to actually document the heat being spread across the back of the GPU, I'm going to try to effectively examine how much backlight actually affects the cooling performance as well as the clock speed of various levels of GPUs. So let's get started with the GTX 1080 that's actually up on the test bench right now. So to do basically all of the testing on the GPU, we're going to run the stress test within 3 Mark for Time Spy. And we're going to measure the max GPU temperature that arises here with MSI Afterburner, and I'll take some thermal images of the backplate during the stress test process to see exactly how much of that heat is distributed across the backplate, and when the backplate is removed, how much is still left on the PCB. We'll also be examining just how much the core clock goes up, which with GPU Boost 3.0 is directly affected by heat. So let's go ahead and start the stress test, which will run for 10 minutes. I'll take my thermal images roughly, uh, roughly at the five minute mark. So uh, we'll check back when this is finished. All right, the benchmark just finished. We have, if we look over here, a max temp of 75 degrees Celsius on the GTX 1080, with the core clock being at 1873 for the most parts during that testing. So the plan now would be to take off the GTX 1080. I'm gonna put the GTX 1070 on the test bench while I strip the backplate off of the 1080 itself and then move on to each other card while I continue to strip the backplates off and then put them on the test bench afterwards. So we'll move on to that. <laughs> So there we go, the backplate on the GTX 1080 is removed. I'm going to keep the same thermal compound on there so as to not uh, skew the results whatsoever to adding different thermal paste than what was already on there. So I'm going to close this back up and put this back on the test bench after I go through the rest of the cards. Okay, GTX 1070 is done testing. We hit a max temperature of 68 degrees Celsius with a core clock of 1936. Now moving on to the GTX 1060. Okay, the GTX 1060 finishes with, why won't you, there we go, finishes with a max temp of 69 degrees and a core clock of 1898. Now it is time to move on to the RX 480, which Actually, will probably be a different scenario as far as calculating core clock just because the boost clocks on on AMD cards don't necessarily work the same way as Nvidia cards. So I think the AMD cards will more than likely just be a reference of temperature rather than temperature and boost clock. But regardless, let's throw the RX 480 up on the test bench. <laughs> Okay, the RX 480 is finished up with its testing. Unfortunately, for some reason, MSI Afterburner actually isn't even recording the temperature of the 480. I couldn't even go into settings and finding under monitoring. So, I had to use uh, GPU Z to get the temperature, which it looks like 79, maybe 80, 80 degrees Celsius right there. And then, um, yeah, 1330 core clock. So that's gonna be pretty steady because that's the boost clock of this card. I don't think that will change with the temperature, but the max temp that we got here was 80 degrees Celsius with a fan speed of 60%. So uh, take off the back plate on that, and now it's time for the RX 470. And then the final test with backplates on for the RX 470, we have a max temperature of 64 degrees Celsius with 17, f no, that's the memory clock, my bad. Uh, somewhere around the 11, oh, that fluctuates quite heavily. Um, I'm gonna say like 1178 is the average that's going on there, 1180. 1178, 1180, somewhere in there. Uh, so I'm gonna take off the backplate on the RX 470 and I'm gonna throw up the GTX 1080 without the backplate back on the test bench and we're gonna see if there's a temperature and boost clock different. Okay, GTX 1080, no backplate. Uh, with a backplate, it, was, it got up to 75 degrees. This is up to 77 here and the core clock was 1873 and it's still the same. So there is 
no difference here. Time to check the GTX 1070. GTX 1070 just finished. All right, high temperature is 68, which is the exact same as what it was beforehand, and the core clock is 1924, which is actually 12 megahertz lower. So while the temperature stayed the same for the most part, um, the core clock did drop slightly. Interesting. GTX 1060 being stress tested, hit 69 degrees with the back plate and 1898's um, core clock. So we actually have an increase of 71 degrees and then the core clock is 1898. So it stayed the same for the core clock. Temperature went up by two degrees. Not a huge change there. Time for the hottest of them all, the RX 480, which hit 80 degrees Celsius last time. RX 480 just completed the stress test. Moving on to GPU Z, we see 79 degrees Celsius for the max temp and 61% fan speed, which is one degree lower as far as overall temp, but 1% higher in terms of fan speed. So basically inconsequential. And the core clock, yes indeed, is 1330. So the RX 480 stays the same. Now it's time to move on to the last graphics card, the RX 470, and we'll wrap it up after that. Last and final, RX 470 stress test is done. The CPU temperature we can find is 68 degrees, which is four degrees higher than the previous one. And looking at the core clock down here, it's basically around the same with the fluctuation still being in the 1170, 1180 mark. So it appears that this is actually the most significant impact out of all of the cards with a four degree increase and it hasn't even gone up four degrees in this office. So let's wrap this up with a couple concluding thoughts. So looking at the final data and wrapping things up, it appears that having a backplate or not having one doesn't really make a whole lot of difference in terms of the core temperature difference on a graphics card. One of the things that I didn't account for that you can see on the thermal imaging pictures is that the VRMs, especially on the NVIDIA graphics cards, you can see a significant higher temperature on those when the backplate is removed than you can with it on. And that's because on the Galaxy graphics cards, there's actually a thermal pad located where the VRMs are on the back of the PCB right there to help actually dissipate the heat through the backplate. So it actually is slightly helpful. I didn't actually test the VRM temperatures, but it's something to look out for if you are taking a backplate off for whatever reason. I'm not necessarily sure you need to, but also just even thinking of graphics cards that come without backplates in the first place, I'm very certain the manufacturers are thinking about the heat on the VRM modules, and it's not necessarily something you should concern yourself with. So this Zotac is likely fine. Pretty simple conclusion here, nothing really that surprised me. Backplates make no difference whether on or off, but I think it was something that needed to be quantified. And with that, I want to give a big thank you to WooWare for sponsoring all of the graphics cards that I used to test this out and for giving me the rights to tinker with them and take off the backplates. If you're in South Africa and looking to get a new graphics card, WooWare should be your go-to place because of their great prices, their fantastic selection, and their customer support team that always wants to make sure that you're taken care of. So if you're in South Africa, head on over to wootware.co.za to woot up your PC. And that wraps it up for this backplate investigation video. Like this video if you found it enjoyable, helpful at all. Dislike it if you already knew all of this information or just like I knew that, so why am I even watching this video in the first place? Totally give me a thumbs down at that point. Leave me a comment down below with any suggestions that you may have with regards to investigating different parts of computer hardware and how one part may affect the other. Whatever your suggestion may be, I'm definitely keen to hear them. And that's it for this video, and I'll see you guys in the next one. Cheers.